$4,875 from network contracting. You have another one for $4,375 from Garafa Plumbing. And then we have from Global Industries, which supplies the pumps, a uh, uh, price of $6,908.99. So we can approve this. Again, the, um, the grant is sitting there, so we'll be reimbursed for these monies, well, for the electrical portion of this after the project is completed. But they need to get on that. They have several other issues to deal with in the Commission Water District. So I'll make a motion to approve that. Second. For where? This is for all, all of them. This is all connected. It's the electrical work, yep. the pumps themselves, and the plumbing work. All three. So. I've got that. Okay. Okay. So you just want to put that for the pump station Yes. So second, um, Vinny, you're going to recuse? Yes. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? related yeah, yeah. 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 all right resolutions resolution number 105-13 a resolution approving town road paving bid whereas the town of Shandaken highway department advertised for bids for paving in certain roads following the town board meeting on July 1st 2013 and whereas bids were received at the town clerk's office Shandaken town hall 7209 Route 28, Post Office Box 67, Shandaken, New York, no later than 12 p.m. on Thursday, July 25th, 2013, with bids to be opened at the town board meeting on the same date at 1 p.m. Therefore, be it resolved that the town of Shandaken approve the bid. And we will hear the bids on the floor. All right. First one is from Stat Construction Company in Statsburg, New York. So they're saying uh, $80.88 per ton in place. And they have another option, add a second roller with operator, $85 per hour or 95 cents per ton. Say that again, second. They're saying add a second roller with operator, yeah. $85 per hour at 0.95 per ton. Four of both. This is option. 
Yeah. Or, so I'm that or yeah, eighty five dollars yeah. or or ninety five cents per ton. Cents a ton yeah. okay. All right, second one's from Peckham Materials in Kingston. And theirs is sixty eight dollars and fifty cents per ton installed. And the last one is from Callahan. Well, uh, oh, Kingston. While well, they're actually connected. Here's those all. New York City. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, they're saying uh, item is really want type three binder course unit price seventy three point ninety five a ton, and then item four hundred two point. 128, 201, 12.5 millimeter F2 HMA 80 series at 75.95 a ton. Do you know what those mean, Eric? Yep. Okay. And Eric, what's the difference between that 73.95 and 75.95? One's binder, one's top coat. Are you mean the, uh, the two okay. prices of the two yeah. One's binder, one's top coat. Oh, the other ones just so put it together. Yeah, that's yeah. 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 Sounds like the price. Yeah. Better, better than I hoped for. 68, 50 installed. Double check that. Yes, that's in place. It's all installed. Yeah. Okay. It's installed at Peckham. And installed. Installation service, new following. Yeah. Installed. Installed. In place. Yeah. Good quick. Yeah. All right, therefore be it resolved to continue the resolution 105-13. Therefore be it resolved that the Town of Shandakin Town Board approve the bid from Peckham Materials located in Kingston, New York for the bid amount of $68.50 per ton installed. All right, move this adoption. Okay. On their letterhead it says Athens, New York, so it says on the envelope Kingston, New York. Kingston or Athens? Well, they're saying the le I'd go by the letterhead, and that's what the estimates are. Athens? Sorry about that. Athens, New York. I may need to read Athens, New York. No second. Board Member Bartlett? Yes. Board Member Bernstein? Yes. Board Member Hagley? Yes. Board Member Jordan? Yes. Supervisor Yes. Yes. Resolution 106-13, Resolution Supporting Catskill Interpretive Center and Visitor Information Gateway, whereas the Catskill Center for Conservation and Development is applying to the State of New York Office of Parks and Recreation Historic Preservations. OPRHP for a grant under the Environmental Protection Fund for a park project and recreational trail program. For a trail project to be located at the site of the Catskill Interpretive Center on Route 28 in Mount Tremper, a site located within the territorial jurisdiction of this town board and whereas as a requirement under the rules of these programs, the Catskill Center for Conservation and Development must obtain the approval endorsement of the governing body of the municipality in which the project will be located. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Shandaken Town Board hereby does approve and endorse the application of the Catskill Center for Conservation and Development for a grant under the Envi Environmental Protection Fund for a park project and recreational trails program for a trail project known as the Catskill Interpretive Center and Visitor Information Gateway and located within this community, and I move its adoption. Thank you. Board Member Bartlett? Yes. Board Member Bernstein? Yes. Board Member Higley? Board Member Jordan? Yes. Supervisor Stanley? Yes. Thank you. We'll get you a certified copy as soon as we can. Thank you. So, um, once again, we're here and touch of tech is not. So, we had hoped to discuss in detail what's in the flood mitigation plan that we've, we're hopefully adopting. It's a rather large document. Uh, it entails everything from what our geography is, what locations you know in the town that we feel are in hazard locations, as well as uh, suggested ideas on ways we can improve our mitigation efforts within the town. Uh, this all ties in with what has been known as the CRZ or Community Reconstruction Zone program. Um, now it's the New York Rising Communities Community Reconstruction Zone whatever it is, title, um, which allows the town of Shandaken to be available up to $3 million for the state. Uh, it also opens up hazard mitigation grant funding from the state, I believe to the tune of another couple of million, 100 million actually available for all the CRZ communities, uh, as well as CDBG monies that are available. But the, we all attended, most attended the meeting yesterday put on by the Ashokan Stream Management, Ashokan Watershed Stream Management Program, Cornell Cooperative Extension, uh, concerning the national flood insurance rates. Now, being that we had the floods of December and October of 2010, the town has been ahead of the game on this flood mitigation emphasis throughout the state, I think. And what's happened in the meantime is there are drastic changes coming to the National Flood Insurance Program. Uh, I, don't want, I can't get into too much detail. I do have flyers here, information that we will try to get out as best we can. I know the Watershed Program has posted this stuff on their online, on their site, uh, and possibly the easiest way for us is probably just put the link to their site so we can provide this information. Um, but there will, there will, you will see, more than likely, you will see a major increase in your flood insurance rates coming over the next five years, if not immediately. Uh, during the sale of a house, uh, these things are still in, are they, st what was like Bill saying yesterday, that they're still in flux, they're not sure if they're committed to it, Leslie, I'm sorry. The night that changes, or the yeah. night that changes? Yeah, the night that changes. The legislation passed in July of 2012, is the law of the land. It's being phased in and implemented over time. So some of the changes have already taken effect, others are going to take a check. Back to the phase in of increased rates take effect in the fall of 2013. So, um, what Mr. Neckerman provided to us yesterday at the workshop is that um, this could mean an increase of upwards anywhere to like $1,000 more, basically about 20% more or 25% more of what your actual cost is right now. Uh, put it also in into that that there are areas that were not mapped within the floodplain before or where the floodplain has moved. Um, so you may not have been in it before. If you have a mortgage on your home, the mortgage company, if you are now going to be in a floodplain, will insist that you provide them with insurance coverage, flood insurance coverage for their asset um, while you still have a note on the house. Um, but if you were, not, no mortgage, but you were not in the floodplain before, what you are now, I thought if you got your flood insurance at the lower rate, that would be grandfathered for a while. Again, that's the one thing they're doing away with as well, is the grandfathering, where before, yes, before that was the case, that if you, before you adopted the map, uh, you, if you bought the flood insurance and you were outside, outside the floodplain, you would stay at a very minimal rate because you weren't in a hazard zone. But if the, once adopted, you're within the zone, you will maintain that rate. That's the way it used to be. It is no longer the case. They are doing away with grandfathering completely. Uh, the problem is, is that the federal government is running out of money on this program. Uh, it does not subsidize itself. Uh, it is brought in from federal tax dollars. Um, 
and they try to make it work within their program. And I think that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to establish where it can be self-sufficient on itself, more so. Uh, again, know that the rates that you've received previously are subsidized rates, and actually it's not subsidized by the federal taxes, which I learned yesterday, it's subsidized by the other rate payers. So the other rate payers pay much more if they're outside the floodplain, they're actually paying a little bit more than they should to help subsidize the rates, the, the rates for the people that are in harm's way. Uh, this is this conversation is going to go on probably the next two years, if not longer. Uh, we do again. We have the CRZ. One of the things in the, in the flood mitigation plan that we addressed early on when we started looking at the plan was what they call the CRS or Community Rating System, uh, which is basically another program sponsored by the NFIP through the NFIP program to provide communities point systems where you can garner points for certain activities that take place, uh, be it notifications to the general public, ordinances that you pass, uh, certain activities, that, uh, ways that you can build or promote building with, not promote building within the floodplain, but protect buildings that are within the floodplain or even create more resiliency for the existing buildings that are there already based on whether they come for a building permit for an improvement. So there's drastic changes coming. This plan, again, lays out a multitude of information. Uh, I do know I have to forward this to several other towns uh, throughout the watershed because, again, a lot of the information, as thick as the document appears, a lot of the information is actually just uh, census data, um, geography data, basic geography of what happens when it rains in a high mountain town and what occurs erosion-wise and deposition-wise in those streams. Uh, it also talks about the fisheries, natural occurrences, vegetation, things like that. These are all things that could be carbon copied by other communities because they're very similar in geography and location and economy for that fact. And then they can just simply plug in their numbers uh, for their census data and economic data. Uh, one, one piece of information, and uh, Doris and I talked about it earlier, and Leslie and I and Brent, we've all discussed this, Eric and I, uh, we do have a concern with this New York Rising Community Reconstruction Zone program uh, in that we have had Tetratech, who is the corporation that helped us complete this flood plan, is one of the eligible, play, or one of the eligible um, engineering firms available to the New York Rising communities. For whatever reason, the state who insists that we are controlling this program has selected Tetra Tech to work with Ulster.